What's up, everyone? My name is Alan, founder and consultant at Fortnite Marketing, and welcome back to our channel. Today's video is going to be a Braze tutorial on how to use a webhook to log test custom events. So that means no more submitting engineering tickets or going deep inside your mobile app and entering a dummy credit card information to log a test custom event. As technical marketers, we get it done ourselves. Custom events serve as the trigger event for many Braze campaigns and canvases like order confirmation, user signup canvas flow, the examples are endless. And that also means that whenever we need to QA our Braze setup, we need to be able to freely fire those custom events or those trigger events. And this custom event webhook that we'll build today will be a highly useful tool for any team's QA process. And this is potentially a huge time saver for many teams. It was amazing to see one of our clients reaction after setting up this webhook template for them, not being able to log certain custom events for testing was a huge blocker for their team. And this webhook template just solved that problem. So let's get started. By the way, all tutorials will be in the new dashboard navigation. First, let's go to templates, webhook templates. And we'll go ahead and create webhook template top right corner. And we'll call this template users track custom event. So users track custom event. Since we'll be using the users track API endpoint to log a custom event. And I have the API documentation page open right here. So I'll be referencing this a few times. You can also log profile attributes, custom attributes, and purchase events through this endpoint as well. So that says it right here. By the way, we're using a webhook template and not a webhook campaign as we don't need to launch a full campaign to log the test custom events. And templates are easier to manage, just helps keep your dashboard cleaner. So there are three parts when building a webhook. First part is the webhook URL. To figure out our full webhook URL, we first need to look at our Braze dashboards URL and look for the number and then whether the root URL ends in .com or .eu. And this is your Braze server or your Braze cluster. The numbers range from 01 to 08, and there are only US or EU servers. So for example, uh, my dashboard is the EU 02 server, but you could be in US 01, US 05, EU 01, et cetera. So once you found your Braze server, you can either go to step 3A of this blog post that I wrote recently, or copy one of the corresponding webhook URLs in the description and insert into the webhook URL field in your webhook template. So we will be using the O2 EU webhook URL, uh, but yours will be one of the URLs here. So go ahead and copy and paste that here. Whoops. Go ahead and copy and paste it into the webhook URL field. And that looks good. And the webhook URL is pretty much the address or the destination of this webhook. The webhook now knows where to go. In our case, the EU O2 server and the users track API endpoint to make the data changes. And the second part of the webhook is the request body. And this is the meat of the webhook. We're giving the webhook directions on what to do, what data to write, which user profile to write it to, etc. You do have two options for the request body. One is the default JSON key value pairs, and this option makes it easy to write the request body by providing a UI. However, for complicated request bodies, um, oftentimes like in users track, we found that it can't quite get the job done. So we will use the second option, raw text, the ultimate freedom. If option one is like your drag and drop editor for email, then this would be the HTML editor. This gives us the ability to freely write the JSON body. Um, the only warning is that you could spend hours looking for one syntax mistake, like a missing comma or a missing semicolon. But over time, our debugging skills will get very good. Awesome. So we are going to copy and paste the code snippet, which is also provided in the description below. So that's what that looks like. And this snippet will serve as the template code when we're ready to use this webhook. A few details about the code. So we are using the events object, um, and there's also the attributes object and the purchase object. And since we're logging a custom event, we're going to be using the events object of the users track endpoint. External ID, we are identifying the user profile by external ID, but you can also search by user alias or Braze ID. The name is the name of the custom event. Right now we just have a general, uh, Right now, we just have a generic placeholder called custom event name. 
the time, every custom event requires a timestamp for when the event happened. So in this code, we are using liquid special keyword now and some surf time syntax, which is right here, the percentage and the letters uh, to turn the timestamp into the Braze preferred ISO 8601 format, which is the familiar year dash month dash date, T for time, and then hours, minutes, and seconds. And then lastly, properties are the metadata of the custom event or attributes that describe the specific occurrence of this custom event. The nice thing about custom event properties is that these do not count towards data points. Cool, and then so we just finished the second part and the last part is under the settings tab. Uh, we need to add two request headers in the form of key value pairs, also known as KVPs. KVPs are literally a pair of a key and a value, and the two necessary request headers are the same for all Braze API calls. The first one is called content type, and we can actually see that in the documentation page. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, which is also in our description below. That's the first key. And our value or our answer for that is gonna be application slash JSON. Add one more key, and the second one is going to be authorization. And then the value for that is capital B bearer space your API key, your REST API key. So the webhook is asking us, what type of content are you providing? And our answer or our value is application slash JSON. And then the webhook is also asking, what is your authorization? What are your credentials? And we provide the API key in our answer. And we'll go ahead and leave it as is for now, but we need to act, we need to create an actual valid API key, which is what we'll do next. Let's go ahead and click save template so we don't lose our progress here. And then in a new tab, let's open up settings, API keys. So right click. And let's create a new API key. And we'll name this key users track. When creating API keys, there are two best practices. One, only enable the endpoint that we need to use, which in our case is the users track endpoint. So let's go ahead and enable this endpoint. But you can also see the tons of other API endpoints that Braze offers. So definitely come back to this page to check out the other API capabilities. For now, we'll scroll all the way to the bottom and click save API key. And two, never expose or share your API keys. API keys are highly sensitive. Um, thankfully, they are hidden on this page. So we always want to be careful when using API keys. Please do not share your API keys with anyone. And at the end of the tutorial, we will be deleting this API key as well. Once the user's track API key is created, copy the API key and go back to the settings tab of our webhook template and replace the your REST API key with the actual API key that we just created. And once again, my API key is exposed on the preview page. Um, we will be deleting this API key and the best practice is to not expose them or if they're exposed, delete them and just generally never share your API key. So your final value should look like, <clears throat> excuse me. So your final value should look like capital B bear space, actual API key and actual API key is your actual API key, not the words actual API key. You can see that I have a valid real API key here. I'm gonna go ahead and click save template once more. And at this point we are finished creating our and at this point, we are finished creating our webhook template. So, so now let's put this awesome template to use. We're going to go ahead and click back to templates on the bottom left corner here. And click on the settings gear on the right and click duplicate. And we'll use our template to log a custom event called membership started. We'll name this webhook users track custom event and membership started. And there's a few things we need to change to the code. So first the external ID, uh, we'll use an external ID of the internal user profile that we're testing with. And our internal external ID, a bit of an oxymoron there is Allen123. The name, we need to change the generic custom event name to membership underscore started. 
time stays the same, the best practice is to use the current timestamp, which is what this liquid snippet uh, provides for us. And then lastly, properties. You can log whichever properties you would like. And if you're testing for the correct rendering of the property values that's templated in your messages, then you want to make sure to use those properties. For example, if you are rendering membership end date in this campaign that you're sending, which is triggered by membership started, then you definitely want to include membership end date as a property so you can see how the message renders. You can see how the message renders. And we'll give it a value of one month. So today's October 23rd, 2023, 1123. So the membership end date is one month from now on for our use case. And then because properties don't count towards data points, I will go ahead and log a second membership. I'll go ahead and log a second property, which will be membership price of $99. And because 99 is an integer, uh, there will be no quotes around that one. We'll go ahead and click Save Template. And then finally, let's go to the Test tab. And before we click Send Test, please note that you'll be making a real API call with this test. It's called a test in the sense that you're making a one-off API call and not launching to a whole batch of users but you are still making a real API call with this webhook. However, since we know exactly which user profile we're writing to, which is Alan123 in our case, we're working within a controlled environment, so we know that it's safe to go ahead and click Send Test. And if you see a 201 created message, that means the API call was a success. If you see an error message that has the code for something something, please try the steps once again, or please send us an email or reach out to me in Email Geek Slack, and we are happy to help. And lastly, let's na navigate to Audience, Search Users in a new tab once again. And I'm going to search for the external ID, Alan123, uh, just to confirm the magic of this webhook template. See that membership started was logged just one minute ago, and we are all finished with our tutorial today. Guys, we created a custom event webhook template so we can log any custom event to any user profile anytime we want, which will be tremendously helpful when we need to QA our Bray setup. If you have any questions, please share them in the comments. We are happy to help. And if you learned something from this tutorial, please subscribe for more awesome Bray tutorials in the future. Thank you for watching and see you next time.